This video is brought to you by Spigen. Today, I am thrilled to be unboxing and to share with you my impressions of the brand new iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now, I have both models here in the brand new Desert Titanium color, and I'm really excited to check these out as the 16 Pros introduce new larger displays, and the 16 Pro Max actually has the largest display ever on an iPhone, which is gonna be really cool. Uh, we also get the new camera control along with some big camera upgrades, as well as that new A18 chip inside, which is gonna be optimized for Apple intelligence. We also get better battery life and faster wireless charging. I'm super excited to check out all these new features and I also wanna talk about and see how the 16 Pro compares to last year's 15 Pro and the new 16 Pro Max compares to last year's 15 Pro Max as I do have these phones here today as well. And ultimately, I will also be talking about whether the new 16 Pro and Pro Max are going to be worth it and whether you should upgrade. But first, to celebrate the growth of this channel, I am giving away this brand new iPhone 16. For a chance to win, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment your favorite feature of the iPhone 16 with your Instagram username, and then follow me on Instagram at Dion's Schutteboom, where I'll announce the winner on the 31st of October. All right, let's unbox these new phones here. Uh, so the 16 Pro starts at $999 and the 16 Pro Max starts at $1,199. So this is gonna be the same as last year. And the 16 Pro comes in with 128 gigabytes where the 16 Pro Max starts with 256 gigabytes, which I do think is a great place to start as that does give you a lot more headroom, uh, particularly as these cameras get better and better and the file sizes get larger and larger. All right, here we go. Really excited to check out uh, this new desert titanium color. Let's lift the tops and, ooh, okay, wow. So first impressions, uh, definitely a little bit warmer than I anticipated. So let me lift this out here. Uh, so it really has a nice um, rose gold-like feel to it, more so rose gold than copper, as from the size, it actually does look quite copper-like, uh, but also rose gold. It's warmer than I thought and a lot less gold than I thought as well. As um, on the images on their website, it really does vary in terms of the color and how it looks, but uh, I can tell you in person, it's a really warm color and it's more pinkish in hue than it is gold and uh, I like it, it looks really chic. What I like is that it's not so flashy and in your face like some of the previous uh, gold color options for the iPhones. This is still understated, but of course, vastly different uh, and very unique when compared to the natural titanium, which of course Apple do still sell uh, for the 16 Pros. You can see here, I have them on the 15 Pros and look at that difference, uh, really night and day, a lot brighter, a lot warmer uh, compared to the more subtle of the natural titanium. Let me know in the comments, which do you prefer? I've gotta say, I really like this color so far. It actually uh, pairs pretty well with my outfit today. I think that uh, color matches really nicely. And most of all, I like it because it's just a little bit different, right? It's never gonna be that standard color that most people get. Uh, for example, on the previous iPhone 15, uh, be sure to check out that unboxing video if you haven't seen it yet. I got the regular black color. And while I do think this looks super sleek and stunning, it is also going to be the most common color. So if you do wanna stand out a little bit, uh, I do think that this uh, desert titanium color is gonna be a great way to do so. But all right, we'll do a more in-depth comparison, uh, particularly in the screen sizes compared to the 15 Pros. But for now, let's take a closer look at, of course, the stars of the show, the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max. So here we have the boxes underneath. You can see they do look a little bit different, uh, just like they do on the regular 16s, but we'll take a closer look at these in a second, as of course, first, we have to do the obligatory screen pill. So here we go. And there goes one uh, small little detail. I like how they even match the uh, text and the icons to the color of the phone. Nice little touch. I can expect uh, these little details from Apple and it's cool to see that from them. And then let's do the Pro Max here. Here we go. And voila, here they are. Let's boot them both up and bring the phones to life. So uh, these screens are actually going to be larger compared to the previous Pro and Pro Max models up by 0.2 inches. Now, just before I bring in the 15 Pros, I wanna see if in the hand I notice a difference. I'm left-handed and I typically use a Pro Max phone. So I'm gonna hold this in my left hand here. And do I feel a size difference? ever so slightly. Yeah, I feel it being a little bit wider compared to the uh, 15 Pro Max, but I must say the size difference here is negligible. Uh, but so, wow, something I really noticed right away is those thinner bezels. Now that I think stands out much more than the slightly wider design. So this helps keep the phone uh, relatively small as opposed to making the phone larger with that larger screen size, right? Because if you have thinner bezels, you can fit a larger display in a smaller size. And while of course the 16 Pro uh, and the 16 Pro Max are gonna be a little bit larger compared to the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, but thanks to those uh, thinner bezels, they aren't gonna be as big as they otherwise would be. 
But okay, let's put these beautiful phones off to the side for a second here and let's take a look at what else is in these boxes. So uh, as you may have noticed, the layout of the box is going to be a little bit different. So the USB-C cable is now coiled in sort of a cable-like form as opposed to being round. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this out and see how it looks. We do still have the SIM tool and that's because I'm here in London. So in the UK, we do still have the SIM tool. And then here we have that USB-C cable. So here we go, USB-C to USB-C. And the length on this, it might previous video I wasn't sure if it was shorter or the same length I did look this up and the length is the same at exactly one meter uh, or just about three feet and sitting beneath the USB-C cable, we have the paperwork, which is going to be uh, very boring for these models as we no longer get the Apple stickers, which is quite unfortunate to see. So you can see we have this little iPhone template uh, or pamphlet, and then we have a bunch of warranty information in a whole lot of different languages. Uh, and as you can see, no more Apple stickers. Kind of a shame, kind of the end of an era. I always like the Apple stickers. Uh, but here on the uh, 16 Pro Max, we have the same USB-C cable, uh, lightning tool or the uh, uh, SIM injector tool, and then the same paperwork as well but otherwise the boxes are the same and it feels like every year they remove one item at a time so uh, hopefully they don't remove the cable for next year all right, so with the boxes out of the way, I now want to take a look and see how the 16 Pros compare to the 15 Pros, as of course the 16 Pros do have slightly larger screen sizes. So the 16 Pro Max goes from a uh, 6.7 inch display up to a 6.9 inch display. And then the 15 Pro Max goes from a 6.1 inch display up to a 6.3 inch display. So 0 0.2 inches here on both sides. And of course, when you're talking about uh, a product the size of a phone, 0 0.2 inches does make a pretty big difference. So let's take a look and also see how that translates to the phones themselves, particularly things like uh, the bezels here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn them all on here and unlock. Great. So now I just want to pull them all up side by side here and just show you what the differences in the bezels are like. Let me pull up settings here, something with a white backdrop. There we go. So as you can see, the difference in the bezel is quite noticeable. And I have to say in person, just looking at my monitor here, it appears to be more visible uh, than it does on camera. And I think particularly here on the Pro Max, it makes a pretty big difference. And again, it enables this larger screen size without making the phone physically that much larger. Uh, that said, I do want to physically hold them up side by side and see what the difference is like here. So starting off here with the uh, 16 Pro and the 15 Pro, I gotta say in the hand, it almost feels like the 16 Pro is a little bit heavier, maybe just a touch, but if it is, I'll put that on screen, uh, but it might be just a little bit heavier actually. Um, but size wise, it doesn't feel much bigger. In fact, when I look at the phones, the biggest thing I see is gonna be those slimmer bezels. And I think that's a great thing. It makes the phone look and feel more modern. So I'm uh, really welcome that change. But if I hold them side by side here, let's take a look. Let me quickly lock them here. So, okay, so there is a little bit of a difference in the width, but it's really small here on the regular Pro, uh, on the 16 Pro here. Uh, the difference that is a little bit more noticeable, however, is the difference in the height, where you can see that the 16 Pro is probably if I had to guess, maybe two or three millimeters taller than the regular, uh, than the 15 Pro rather, which I think is fine. I don't think that little height difference really makes a big difference. Uh, I think it's more the width that you're going to feel more as that's going to uh, affect the usability more. So say being able to access the other end of the keyboard. And here I've got to say the difference between the 16 Pro and the 15 Pro is negligible. Honestly, you don't really feel it when it comes to the physical size, but I do know that those 0 0.2 inches is going to go a long way when it comes to the screen size and then the general usability, right? Having a slightly larger screen is going to give you uh, slightly larger icons, more text on a screen at the same time. So here I think this is a big upgrade. And now just quickly, let me do the same here for the Pro Max. Let me hold them side by side here from a weight perspective, just based on my impressions here. Again, the 16 Pro Max does actually feel a little bit heavier and it would make sense as the phone is gonna be a little bit larger. Uh, but again, I'll put the weight on screen if it is. Uh, but from a size perspective, it actually, yeah, it feels a little bit bigger, actually a little bit more so than the uh, 15, 16 Pro to the 15 Pro, I will say just a tiny bit, particularly when I reach here to that top corner. Uh, let me hold them side by side here. Let's see. So the width, it's also going to be a little bit wider. So the difference in width is going to be a little bit more on the 15 Pro Max versus 16 Pro Max compared to the uh, 15 Pro and 16 Pro. And then in height, I would say similarly. So it's also a little bit taller, as you can see, uh, definitely around maybe three 
maybe even three and a half millimeters going from the 15 Pro to the 16 Pro. So uh, I would say at the end of the day, the uh, from what I can tell so far from my impressions is the difference in size is less noticeable on the uh, 16 Pro, where on the 16 Pro Max, you do feel it a bit more. Now I normally use the 15 Pro Max. This is actually my personal phone and I will be switching to the 16 Pro Max and holding it now, kind of using it, scrolling, uh, putting it, say put it in my pocket, take it out, take a phone call. Uh, it still feels great. I have to say it doesn't feel too big. Now I wouldn't want my phone to be much bigger than this, but it still feels like I can handle this uh, and operate this with one hand sort of reach the other end of the screen. And if I have to, I can reach the top uh, with one hand as well. Uh, I personally, I really love using the Pro Max size. I actually switched to this on the 14 Pro Max and I've been with the Pro Max phone uh, ever since for that larger display and exceptional battery life. And particularly for the 16 Pro Max, Apple actually says that this here is gonna have the best battery life of any iPhone. Before we continue, I'm gonna set up my iPhone 16 Pro so we can test and compare in more detail. And while we wait, it is so important to protect your new iPhone. And this is where Spigen comes in. Starting with the Tough Armor AI MagFit. Made as a result of thousands of AI powered drop simulations to perfectly position the XRD foam and air cushions for extreme protection. And I also like how it has a built in kickstand for watching videos on the go. This next case is my favorite, the Enzo Aramid MagFit. It feels as premium as it looks, made from Aramid fiber for superior slim and light protection. It also features anodized aluminum accents like on the buttons for a satisfying click. And then there's the classic Ultra Hybrid MagFit 01. The teardown design is super intricate and has multiple layers for added depth. The 01 still delivers military grade certified drop protection, prolonged clarity, as well as scratch resistance. And check this out, for picture perfect protection, make sure to use the Optic Armor MagFit. With its buttery smooth camera cover that guards against drops, fingerprints and debris, all in a slim design that sits comfortably in the pocket. To top it off, for full 360 degree protection, apply the Glass TR EaseFit and Glass TR EaseFit Optic Pro in three quick steps for screen and lens protection. Spigen also have excellent MagSafe wallets. The Ultra Hybrid 01 MagFit case perfectly complements the 01 case and it can hold up to four cards. Then for even more security, there's the Tintap MagFit Plus, featuring a unique locking mechanism to keep your valuables safe. So to upgrade your iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max with Spigen, be sure to head to the links in the description today. And we're back. So I've set up my iPhone 16 Pro and my 16 Pro Max. And as you can see, we're now running iOS 18 and it is looking great here on both phones. I especially like the new wallpapers that come with iOS 18. I think they really add a fresh touch of color to the iPhones. Uh, but let's talk about some of the biggest differences with the new 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max and also test some of these features uh, and explore in more detail how they compare to last year's 15 Pro and and 15 Pro Max. I'm gonna have them side by side here because the uh, single physical biggest difference is gonna be in the dimensions, right? So the screens of the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max are gonna be 0.2 inches larger. And I wanna demonstrate to you here uh, with all the screens on to show you what that difference looks like. So as you can see, that difference is gonna be more noticeable on the Pro Max model as opposed to the regular Pro model. But nonetheless, uh, 0.2 inches does go a long way. Another difference this year with the 16 Pros is that the uh, display brightness now still goes up to 2000 nits like it did before, but it now gets much dimmer going all the way down to one nit of brightness. As you can see, uh, the display is now gonna be much darker and this is great if you're using your phone, say, late at night and you have your significant other in the room, you don't wanna wake them, uh, having the screen get even darker will be great. Now, one thing I am noticing here as I turn the brightness down uh, is that it appears that the 16 Pro is getting a lot darker than my Pro Max. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Yeah, the Pro Max uh, is still is more visible than the Pro. I wonder why that is, and in terms of the brightness, yeah, the 16 Pro actually appears to be a bit brighter as well than the Pro Max, interesting. Um, now I do know I'm still downloading data here in the background on my Pro Max, that may have to do with it. It is running a little bit warmer because of that. This one is already completed in terms of uh, carrying over all the data, so that may have to do with it, but that wouldn't explain why the screen doesn't get as dim. That is uh, interesting. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna, for now, uh, give benefit of the doubt and say that has to do with the fact that I'm still transferring data here on my Pro Max. As you can see, I still have 66 gigabytes uh, to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this at the end of it and I'll leave a note on screen uh, to see whether I potentially have a problem here with my 16 Pro, but more than likely, I think it has to do with the fact that I'm still transferring data. And then on the left hand side, we still have the action button like we did before. Now, I personally use that for the torch. I've got that set up here on both phones. Uh, super useful. If say I'm coming home late and I need to uh, see something in the dark, having this 
always in your pocket is really nice. And having that physical click, uh, I think is great. So I really welcome this uh, feature here, not just on the pros, but now also on all models, which I think is a big plus. Uh, and then of course, we still have that grade five titanium design along the edges of the phone. Now I will say that the titanium frame on my previous 15 Pro Max, which was my main phone for a year, has held up really well. Um, I just have one tiny mark, I believe, along the bottom. There it is, right on the corner. I wonder if you guys can see that right on the corner there. I have a really small little mark. Uh, that is actually from a drop, but otherwise the frame has held up exceptionally well. And then over on the other side, we have that brand new camera control. So here it is on the right, we have it on both phones. Now I already shared my sort of first impressions using it in my iPhone, iPhone 16 unboxing video. And if you haven't seen that, I'll leave that linked at the end of this video. Uh, I do recommend you check it out because that's where I share my sort of genuine first impressions of this control, what I like and what I don't like as much. And I've kind of used it now for a couple of hours, kind of played around with it. And a lot of my initial impressions honestly haven't really changed. And that uh, it's a cool feature, right? Let me show you some of the functionality here. Uh, in fact, let me demonstrate this here on the regular 16 Pro here. So we got the uh, subject in frame here. Let me go ahead and demonstrate how this uh, camera control works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it here on the side of the phone. And as you can see, that's automatically going to launch the camera app. So it's gonna open right away from that button, which is quite useful uh, to have as a shortcut. And then you can click the button to take a picture. As you can see, I am taking a picture now. Now it does physically click. So if you guys wanna hear real quick, as you can hear, that does physically click. However, it does more than just click as there are uh, multiple layers to this button. There's also a touch layer where, as you can see, I can also use it to zoom in and out of my pictures here. And this is a really unique experience. Now, you definitely have to apply a little bit of pressure. So if I take my finger uh, and just start swiping on it normally, as you can see, nothing happens. And I am touching it. You really have to apply a bit of force and then move. Now, I think Apple did this to avoid uh, potential accidental touches, but I will say it does make it a little bit less uh, user-friendly and also a bit less natural. I prefer to just be able to swipe like I would say on a trackpad, on a computer, uh, or even a touch screen, as it does of course have that sapphire coating uh, and is essentially a mini trackpad, right? It does, it's able to sense your finger, your gesture, uh, as well as the uh, area to where you move it. Uh, but as you can see, it allows you to control things like the zoom, and then you can also double tap. So it has to be a pretty firm tap, and you can cycle through the different functions. So you have your tone, you can also change the style, the cameras, as well as your depth. So let me go in and show you some of these new uh, styles here, as you have a bunch of new photographic styles this year, which you can now adjust uh, in much more depth here. So there we go, double tap again, to enter, you can see I'm still learning the system. Uh, and here we go, so we can cycle through all the different photo styles, which are now uh, much more customizable on the iPhone 16s, particularly on the Pros. So as you can see, this is an intuitive new way to control your camera. Now, whether this is something that I'm going to be using frequently uh, is really, really remains to be seen. As of course, a lot of these, in fact, all these functions, you can still do even without this camera control. For example, the zoom, you can of course still pinch to zoom with your finger uh, or how I like to zoom is with my uh, thumb here over on the lens cover here or on the uh, lens control. And as you can see, we can make really precise control to zoom in and out of the shot. And I think in some ways, this is gonna be more comfortable as I I think the biggest downside of this new camera control is the positioning. Right, so let me show you what I mean. So if we take a look here on the right-hand side of the phones here, you'll see the uh, camera control on both phones. And let me hold both phones here. So starting off here with the 16 Pro, as you can see, my thumb rests right above the camera control. So if I'm holding this phone, say to take a picture in portrait mode, my thumb is going to fall above it. And I really have to make a conscious effort to kind of move down to touch that camera control, let alone use it to, for example, zoom. And it it doesn't feel very comfortable. This probably doesn't look very comfortable and that's because it is not. And particularly in portrait mode, because you hold your phone uh, in one hand, it doesn't feel very secure and stable and I almost worry about dropping it. Now, the same is true when you go into landscape mode, right? So if I hold my phone uh, like I normally would in landscape mode, once again, as you can see, my finger does not rest on that camera control. Uh, in fact, it sits just to the right of it this time where if I do wanna reach it, I kinda have to awkwardly I really can't with one hand unless I change my grip and hold the phone with my middle finger and then use my index finger to kind of touch it, but that makes zooming quite difficult. And then the other alternative would be to grip it like this and then use my thumb, but that that is as uncomfortable as it looks. So really it's, it's a little bit tricky to use. I think the best way to use it 
if you were to use it in landscape mode, uh, would be to use both hands and then you can have your right hand free to then use that camera control uh, to say zoom in or out of whatever it is you are filming. But once again, the positioning here isn't great. Now I kind of understand that Apple was put in a pretty tricky position here uh, because well, if you want to use it in landscape mode, you want it to be lower. However, if you want to use it in portrait mode, you want it to be higher. So where do you put it? Well, they've kind of put it in the middle. I think it would have been nice if perhaps it was bigger. Maybe they stretched it out further so that it would just be more accessible uh, or just prioritize one over the other, right? Prioritize either landscape shooting or portrait shooting. This way, they kind of tried to do best of both, but in reality, it makes it a little bit difficult to use. But I'm not gonna say my conclusions just yet. I still have a lot of testing to do with these phones, but so far uh, it is a pretty unique feature in a sense that we haven't seen something like this before, but just because something is unique doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be great. And I think this here does suffer primarily from the positioning. And I also wish that some of the interactions, particularly the zooming would be more uh, user-friendly, right? Without first requiring you to really press to zoom, instead be able to just slide your finger over it. I think it just make it uh, easier to use having less friction. All right, so the cameras themselves do actually get some upgrades as well. So we now have a 48 megapixel fusion sensor or fusion camera. And what that's basically going to translate to uh, is a new second generation quad pixel camera. And that's gonna create better 23 megapixel photos when you're using the 2X crop mode. Uh, we also now get a big upgrade to the ultra wide lens as that is now going to be a uh, 48 megapixel sensor as opposed to being a 12 megapixel previously. And what is also cool, particularly for the 16 pros is that we also now get the uh, 5X lens on the 16 pros where previously this was reserved only for the pro max model now you get it on both so this essentially upgrades the 16 pro uh, from a 3x lens up to a 5x lens and this i think is really sweet and when it comes to video, both models can now also shoot 4K at 120 FPS. So you're gonna get some really smooth uh, 4K slow motion footage. I'm definitely gonna use some of that as B-roll. I love shooting uh, some of my product videography outdoors uh, when I'm out in the wild using these products. Uh, I love shooting on my iPhones and I think the uh, 15 Pro or 16 Pro Max is going to be my new camera of choice. And then on the inside of these phones, powering them, we have the A18 Pro chip. So this is actually a pretty big jump because this is a two generation jump as the previous iPhone uh, iPhone 15 Pros had the A16 Pro chip. So we're skipping the A17 Pro and going straight to the A18 Pro. And based on the numbers that Apple have provided and some of the Geekbench tests that I've ran and seen so far, these do appear to be a pretty big upgrade, uh, running around 30% faster compared to the iPhone 15 Pro and also uses less power compared to the iPhone 15 Pro. So that should mean uh, that these chips will run more efficiently and also give you better performance. Particularly when it comes to the GPU, where Apple actually says that these chips are 40% faster than on the 15 Pro. So that's a really big jump uh, in just one year, uh, which I think is gonna be great, particularly for the long run, as I would expect these phones to get really long software support and updates. And again, because this chip is a two generation jump, um, you could reasonably expect the 16 Pros to get two more years of software updates compared to the 15 Pros. Now, why did Apple put all this performance in these phones? Well, a large part of the pitch of the iPhone 16, including the 16 Pros, is gonna be Apple intelligence. However, unfortunately, if you buy these phones today, you will not get any of these Apple intelligence features. Uh, and if you live in other parts of the world, like for example, in the EU, where there's a lot more regulation, uh, it may be many months, even half a year plus, before we see any of these features. And this I think is really a shame, especially as a tech reviewer, because typically if a company promises future features uh, to come, I don't like to review a product based on that premise until everything has arrived, right? Until everything uh, has come out. And basically today for my review, I'm gonna be reviewing these phones as is, and I'm not gonna incorporate or even factor in those future, uh, if those future features, no matter how good they are, until I've been able to test them. So if you do buy these phones today, no matter how heavily Apple uh, markets them as AI phones, right, being built for for AI, uh, really, you're not gonna get any of that today, at least not Apple intelligence. Okay, so now I wanna go back to the uh, 16 Pros and the 15 Pros and talk about the differences between them uh, and see which you should buy. Should you save a bit of money and go for the 15 Pros or should you spend that bit extra and get the new features on the 16 Pro? So first, let's take a look at what the biggest differences are between them. I would say the first biggest difference is gonna be the larger displays, uh, particularly here on the Pro Max, this makes a difference, but you also feel that on the regular Pro. And I do think this is something uh, that you 
appreciate from day one, but especially the longer you use the phone. And with that, we also get those thinner bezels going around the display, which makes the phone look and feel extra modern. Now we get a whole slew of camera upgrades, particularly uh, that camera button that we looked at before, or should I say the camera control. Now, again, I'm going to leave my final thoughts for that for my full review video, but you've already heard some of my thoughts when we were testing it earlier. So this, I think, is something that will be more important for some than it will be on others. However, I think something that we can all appreciate are the camera upgrades to the lenses. So of course, we do have that new uh, improved 48 megapixel main sensor and the new 48 megapixel ultra wide sensor, which are going to be quite great. But I think perhaps one of the most um, overlooked features of the 16 Pros that really I think matters, particularly for the long run, is going to be that new generation chip, right? That A18 Pro chip, they two generation jump compared to the 15 Pros, and this means it's gonna translate into much better longevity over time, as well as performance. So if you are buying for the long run, um, just for that new processor, it may be worth getting the 16 Pro or the 16 Pro Max. But anyway, I've got a lot to test here. I'm really excited to check out both the 16 Pro as well as the 16 Pro Max. Uh, I really like this color, I do wanna say that again i've been using them uh, briefly here throughout the day while my data transferred and this here looks really great particularly in the light it's one of those colors that kind of changes based on the sunlight based on how bright the room is uh, but this depiction here i would say is pretty accurate for how it looks in person uh, for me it comes across warmer than i thought and i mean that in a good way uh, while it's still being subtle and doesn't scream oh look at me i'm a gold phone it's a little bit unique a little bit different uh, and if you know you know but this here i think uh, is a home run i really like this color in fact i would say this uh, uh, desert titanium as well as the black color for the iPhone 16s are going to be my two favorite colors of the year. But anyway, uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover in my upcoming iPhone 16 Pro videos. I've got my reviews, I've got comparisons coming up. So if you do have any questions at all, please leave them down below. And thank you so much for watching this video. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll also leave my unboxing and impressions video of the iPhone 16s on screen right now, as well as my iPhone 16 Pro first things to do video to get the most out of your phone. Thank you so much for watching and take care.